So Blaine, today I wanted to talk about something that's really timely and relevant for the market, and that is interest rates. It's sort of, you know, a taboo word these days. <laughs> However, interest rates, in my opinion, are still really low. Um, you know, what's the sort of the current status of interest rates from your perspective? Oh yeah, it's been a hot topic for the last two and a half years. Um, really the last two years we saw historic lows, historic screaming to the top of our lungs, telling everybody how low the rate was. Is it time to buy? Is it time to refinance? A lot of that going on. Now, yes, rates have ticked up. Anybody that's in my professional side, that side of the table, we all knew it was coming. It was gonna be short-lived when we had a three in front of a 30-year fixed. Now, rates trending around the high fours, low fives, that's still a great rate. I tell a lot of people, I was born in 1981, the going rate was 18%. When I got in the business 12, 13 years ago, a good rate was six and a half, and you might pay two points to get you there. So four or five in front of anything is still really good. And if you just look at the home values and appreciation that we've had, along with the rising rent rates, it's like, if you can get in, if I can get you approved and you can get into something, do it now. Yeah. Much or pay 10% more and or maybe a rate that's a point higher next year. And or if that rate goes lower in the next year or two, I'm gonna be the first one to call you to say, hey, I got you a better deal than what we signed up for originally. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, and I sort of am, am looking at this, and I think last month in April, we had, during one week, the rates increased by, I want to say, three quarters of a percent, which is insane. I mean, that's so high. I mean, what, just to give people context, like, what is a normal sort of, you know, in this, in sort of volatile times, what does a normal rate movement look like? That was a knee-jerk reaction in, in, in April. We didn't anticipate that. We knew that the feds were gonna raise the Fed fund rate, which was going to help cure inflation, which will typically drive a mortgage rate lower. Uh, a lot of the general public and even uh, unexperienced uh, agents might be under the impression that a uh, Fed hike is equivalent to a mortgage rate hike, and that's not. So I think that's the biggest thing. I was probably preaching for about three weeks, telling everybody like, no, it's actually a good thing that the feds are raising the rates, because do you like paying five dollars a gallon for gas no do you do you like your eggs and poultry and meat going to on average i think it's uh, eighty dollars a month we're paying more and just groceries i mean the recent article i read was per household we're all paying about 250 dollars to 300 dollars more per month whether it's gas groceries or any type of utilities um so yeah that's that's a big deal where let's cure the inflation and then we could see rates come back yeah and I had done a video recently about, you know, how home ownership is a hedge to inflation for that very reason, because we're, we're already seeing those increases in gas, groceries, clothing, everything else. So if you were renting and, you know, the landlords essentially know that they, you know, it's, it's in their favor. And so they are raising rents significantly. So if you can limit you know, the biggest expense you probably have every month um, and to sort of hedge that against the inflation, why wouldn't you do that even if it is at a 5% rate? Because, you know, in the end, you're going to come out, you know, ahead. Absolutely. And it's a lot more of educational conversations that I have with people, general consumers, everybody. It's kind of like, all right, we'll look at what kind of write-offs could you have by owning a home? You know, or can you write off the, the mortgage interest that you pay, the taxes, and or is it time maybe to buy an investment property? If everybody yeah. else is paying the landlord, well, you know, why can't you be a part of that mix? Right, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts in terms of, you know, what are we going to see in terms of mortgages over the next sort of 24 months? I kind of have some thoughts, but I'm curious, you know, you, you look at this every day. The big wigs that I follow that seem to know a lot more than I do, they're saying in the next maybe six to 12 months, we could still be in a little bit of a roller coaster, could go up a little bit more, could go down a little bit more, more consensus on things going up a little bit as far as rates are concerned. But as their inflation starts to cure, we could start to see mortgage interest rates come a little bit lower. Gotcha. You know, I think the concern is products that are out there and that are available. You know, a tough times with the economy, if it's in a tough position, you're not gonna have a surplus of loan products available. You know, all the banks are going to kind of tighten up before they start really 
handing the money out. Yeah. So that's kind of another story where it's like, or a conversation, if we can kind of get that, that ball rolling now, let's do it. Even if you're six to 12 months away, let's go ahead and get, make sure we have our ducks in a row. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, I mean, I sort of, you know, every year that there has been a presidential election, which we will be having one in, you know, roughly two years, um, rates have gone down, like every year. And, um, you know, so I think that, you know, everything you said makes perfect sense. It's going to be a little bit volatile for a little bit. I predict, and we'll have to cut, we'll have to like redo this in two years. I predict that in 2024, 2025, there's going to be a huge refi boom. Okay. Because I think that the rates, whatever they are over the next, you know, two years, I think that they are going to go down because of, like I said, the election. I don't know, it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens. But yeah, it seems to make sense that things are going to continue along and, and we'll see 6%. Um, now, if we, what I'm saying with my clients is it's not making a huge difference in whether they're going to buy or not. I know at certain price points, it, it that becomes a little more sensitive. But for instance, if you have somebody who is looking at a $800,000 house, well, now if rates are up, you know, another percent, maybe now they're looking at a $700,000 house. And, and what I've been really trying to do is for the people who are actively looking is to reach out and have sort of what I call a recalibration discussion. Because it's like, okay, hey, have you talked to your mortgage lender? Because we need to like update. I don't want you to go under contract on this house that you are approved for up to that amount. However, what does that look like for your payment and your lifestyle? So I'm just curious from your perspective, you know, like have you had conversations with, uh, with folks around, you know, how is this interest rate going to change my payment? And, you know, should I buy now or should I just sit it out for now? Uh, absolutely. So a lot of my first quarter clients from 2022 or potential clients, if they're not under contract, but obviously by now, I'm having that discussion with them as opposed to, do we want to push that purchase price down to get back to your comfort level? I felt like for most current homeowners that will sell their home and buy a new one, they're not really bat an eye at the rate. They get it, it went up, but yet they're still getting, you know, they had 20% appreciation from last year to this year. They're still going to be able to walk away with a significant down payment for the next home. So it still more or less fits the family needs yeah. where they want to be. Yeah. That makes sense. It does. And it, you know, and it, it's a really an interesting um, point that you raised because I actually was speaking with somebody yesterday who said, hey, we bought our house four years ago and paid roughly $450,000 for it. And now the houses are selling for around $800,000. And, and they had made the, the comment that they said, we thought about moving, but we don't think that we could afford to get into anything. And my immediate reaction was, Okay, you automatically have a minimum of four hundred thousand dollars of equity. From what you just told from, me. From what you yeah. just told me, and so if you, that's like double essentially what you just paid. So how is that possible that you would not be able to get into anything? And I think it's important to you know at least look at the numbers. I I believe in science. I believe in data, not feelings. So. For me, it's all about like, okay, what does this look like, especially with the change in interest rate? So for me, I would really prefer to advise somebody, hey, call the lane, have him run the numbers. You know, how complicated of a process is that for you to sort of have those advisory conversations and say, here's where you are, here's where you could be, you know, given the interest rates, um, to sort of give people a picture of like, does this make sense for me to move or should we just, you know, kind of hunker down? It's about a 30 minute, basically analysis of me reviewing their wants and needs and what they could and couldn't do from from a selling perspective once i have all their information in got the credit got the the loan balances the payment that they want to be at or the down payment they could they could have it's very easy for me to put those numbers together okay very easy well, I think I need to be sending a lot more people your way because I think, um, because yeah, I think that it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, and, and I don't try to, I don't tell people to time the market. It's more, is your house meeting your needs? And if it's not, it makes sense to at least do that investigation to see, could we still be in the same position, same payment, but be in a house that's better suited to us today? Mm -hmm. And it costs nothing. You know, yeah. we don't charge anything for our services whatsoever until you close and then we get paid from that perspective yeah but yeah nothing out of pocket 
Okay, awesome. That sounds like, I mean, a win-win. I mean, why would you not at least get the information and then you can make decisions based on that? Absolutely. So, all right, cool. Any last thoughts on, you know, interest rates and kind of, you know, what you, what you would advise people today, you know, just seeing the volatile interest rates? I would say just don't get too caught up in where we're at today, tomorrow. Go with your gut when you're looking at homes and or, you know, have that consensus of kind of where you want to be on that payment, that down payment. Uh, if anything, get your credit cards down as far as the balance is so you do have really good credit. That's the number one thing I tell most people, they say they're six to 12 months out. I'll look and see where their credit scores are and be like, hey, look, you're right at a 700. But if you got to a 720, I can give you a quarter point better rate. Yeah. So I know you just talked about us talking about rates and how important that is. So I'd go back in the conversation and tell them how they can be better qualified in this market. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think really the only the only bad answer is to is to sit and watch for things to happen yeah. because we know what things are now. We know what the rate is. We know what the prices are. And we also know that prices and rates are going up. So wouldn't you rather have that certainty of saying, okay, this is what I can do now and does this meet my needs? So, Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. And uh, I look forward to regrouping in two years to see what, uh, what the results are in 2024. All right. Thank you. You're Appreciate welcome. It.